Philco presents the Philco Television Playhouse. Tonight's play, Run Like a Thief, by Sam Hall. Based on an original story by Man Rubin. absolutely wrong. Do you want our ladies and gentlemen to spread their rolls with a fish knife? Or cut their smoke trap with a spoon? <laughs> if they're hungry enough, it won't matter. To you, no. This is all wrong. This is impossible. Alexander. Madame Fuller. Oh, it's certainly good to have you back again. Well, after 15 years, it becomes a pleasant habit. How's Della? Fine. You have your old room back? Yes, yeah, she's all settled. Good. Now, tell me. But the Florida season is bad, as everyone said. Oh, rain, rain, sun, sun, the usual thing. <laughs> That's funny. You know, we're booked solid through July. Everybody's been writing to ask if they can sit at one of your tables. Mm. You know, you're not going to see a stranger all summer. That's very nice, Madame Poulain. How are the college boys working out? Oh, they're working out absolutely wonderful, Madame Poulain. Couldn't be that bad. <laughs> Introduce them to me. Gentlemen, this is uh, Madame Poulain who made this beautiful hotel. Out of mountains and fresh air. Chemical engineering number one. Harvey Wilkes. Harvey? Chemical engineering number two. Larry Burns, man. Larry, I hope you both realize what an honor it is to work with Alexander. A very great honor. So pay close attention and you'll learn many things. I hope you both have a profitable and a happy summer. Thank you, man. Hmm, you can teach him. That last winter spoiled me, Polly. Oh. I had a busboy in Florida. Robbie was his name. That boy could set a table. That boy really cared, darling. Well, why didn't you bring him along? Well, I wanted to, but you know how young people are. They're so difficult to handle. We could use him. Well, I, I tried. I'm correct to my charges. I really hope this will be the best season yet. Now, look, gentlemen. A beautiful table is as much of a masterpiece as those formulas you figured out in college. <laughs> Mr. Alexander, we don't eat this way in school. Look, if our, our guests wanted to uh, have cafeteria food, they could spend their vacation in the cafeteria. <laughs> you and I, my dear friends, are here to see that Madame Poulard's guests get exactly what they want. With as much style and distinction as we can summon from our meager resources. Look, let's play a game. Ten years from now, you are a successful, uh, whatever it is. Yes? You have money, position. You come here. You're tired, desperate. Madame Pola wants to make you so happy that every time you have a winter dream, you dream of us. Now, you arrive, you take a swim, you get a cramp. Can we help that? Then you take a ride and the horse throws you. Did we teach the horse that? Then you dance at cocktails and your partner steps all over your feet. You try to sleep, but your insomnia is unbearable. We can help none of these things. But when you enter through these portals into this beautiful room to eat, all you have to do is wear your finest clothes, pick up the correct fork, and open your mouth. We supply heaven. No matter how bad the rest of the day has been, are your winter dreams are ours. Do you own stock in this place? Yes. These tables. Alexander the Great and his world. My wife says that. Now, please, fellas, will you please help me? Up. Up on your toes. Always up. Up. Oh. You know, I had a bus boy in Florida. He stood like Mercury on his florist advertisements. Mr. Alexander, it's getting kind of late. We're, we're supposed to go swimming this afternoon. Swimming? With the tables in that condition? There are to be no errors on my tables. 
Just we have to have a firm understanding about before one dinner, dinner is, is served. served. And if one of you spills a thing on my guest, you'll be transferred from my tables immediately. Huh? <laughs> Robbie! What? Oh. I changed my mind. Is the job open? Is the job open? Did you see that? This is a professional. Go, fellas, go swimming and report at six o'clock to the head waiter for reassignment. I think this was nuclear dynamics or something. Robbie. No. Now, why didn't you come up with us? Well, I didn't want to tag along. Do you know, after the main dining room closed, I got a job as a bellhop. Bellhop. Robbie, that's not for you. That's not for you. And you promised you wouldn't take any job that comes along. You went back living on the beach again. Mm. Robbie, Robbie, those wanderers. You shouldn't waste your time with people like that. They're not so bad once you get to know them. But they're not your kind, beachcombers. You should meet nice people. Robbie, I see that you meet nice people. I get so tired of being taken care of, Alex. Oh, I'm so glad you came. Della will be so pleased. I told Della. When Robbie comes, this time, we start on a new project. Was she mine? Mind. I talked it all over with Della. Look, I made you a busboy. Now I'm going to make you a great waiter. <laughs> well, I'm not working here yet, you see. You will. Two minutes after I speak to Madame Pola, <laughs> you give me my own busboy. And then the guests will fight to be served on our tables. Uh -huh. And I'll stand guard while you serve. Huh? No, no, you're too important. Chemical engineering, they stand guard. Have you seen it today? What? Taurus. Gemini. No, here. Yeah, uh, you brought the wrong one. I'm Gemini. No, I'm, I'm Taurus. Yeah. What does Gemini say? I haven't seen a horoscope since Florida. Gemini. Uh, it's a cataclysmic day for you. It's... Cataclysmic? With you here? When Jupiter is in the crux of the... Ah, don't the read it. Today the stars must be crazy. Listen, we have much to do. Come on, help me. And then we go to Madame Pola, and we get your room. And then we see Della. <laughs> Imagine starting a season with chemical engineering. Now we work with style and distinction. Robbie, you would make a wonderful waiter. Oh, I'm sorry, madame. This must be the wrong room. Oh, Alex, come back in here. Well, this must be a guest room. <laughs> madame Paula must have redecorated. Look at those draperies. <laughs> And the bed. Della, this is not service quarters. Oh, Alex. You know, you should have been a decorator. Oh. Yes, you should. Oh, oh. I wouldn't be much good at anything but hotel rooms. <laughs> Imagine me planning a kitchen. But you know, I could design a magnificent closet. Oh, the things I could do. Hat racks, drawers, shelves with that pretty paper. A tie rack? Yes, you should have one. <laughs> Honestly, every time I took a look at this one, I could cry. <laughs> and they keep getting more and more stuff. We have enough for a house. This is our house. Della? Mm -hmm. Our family is back together again. Robert, did he come? At exactly the right moment. You must be terribly pleased. Oh, yes. He's all set. I got him a room down the hall. Madame Pola hired him without even seeing him. He's getting his uniform now. Bella, it's going to be the best summer yet. <laughs> Alex, you said it every year. Well, isn't it true? Bella, you must help him get settled. Why don't you fix his room tomorrow? Uh, spend a little money. Make it nice. Of course. I was just thinking. Next winter, when we go back to Florida, we could get a bigger apartment for the three of us. <laughs> he needs a home. A bigger apartment in the winter, a room in the summer. Is that a home? Wait till you see that boy next season. A little success. That's all he needs. He needs a permanent home. 
Something that lasts longer than a season. Is there anything more permanent than a hotel? I knew if he came up here this summer, he'd be on his way. Alex, stop living his life. I'm sorry. Go on. Bella, hmm? close your eyes. Hmm? Close your eyes. <laughs> well, Alexander the Great, magician extraordinaire, prepares his newest trick. Can I look now? No. Oh, I forget the magic, magic word. <laughs> Abracadabra. No, no, no. Gemini, Taurus. Alex. Now, you have been reading horoscopes again. No, I haven't. Uh, I uh, promised you I wouldn't. Della, close your eyes. <laughs> Palm Beach, Pinehurst, White Sulphur, voila. Darling. It's a year-long present. Every day I bring you a new bud. Well, 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 it's just the right thing for it. Here, I've been saving this. For what? Oh, a home. We'll use it now. It's beautiful. You make everything beautiful, Della. I want to. For you. I've got something for you, too. <laughs> no, you don't have to close your eyes. But I want to. <laughs> Magnificent, Della. You know, when I wear that, I'll be the best dressed man in the dining room. Made in Italy. Mm. Della, with this tie on, I can only serve Italian food. <laughs> Macaroni, spaghetti, lasagna, with all the smells of Italy. <laughs> Mostly garlic. <laughs> oh, darling, darling, darling. I do hope it's our best season. You are happy, aren't you? Yes, I am. I always am. The first night of the season. Ah, this was perfect, Florence. An absolutely perfect dinner. The chef was inspired tonight, wasn't he, girl? Oh, yes, I think so. Madame Pollard, it's a pleasure to be back enjoying your hospitality. Please sit down, Mr. Howard. Oh, it's so nice to see you, Mrs. Howard. How are you, Madame Pollard? And your grandchildren, too. Oh, it makes me very happy to see you all here tonight. Mm -hmm. I'd like to start the new season with my old friends. Look how beautiful. Oh, look. Madame Pollard, Alexander never forgets. Well, the day he does, I'll close my hotel. Thank you, much. Mrs. Howard, I hope you'll allow your charming granddaughters to come dancing tonight. Yes, of course. They'd add such a note of beauty to the evening. <laughs> Well, I hope I never start a new season without you, Alex. I hope you never have to, madame. You now, one day soon, when I feel luxurious, I'm going to ask you to serve dinner in my room, for Della and me. We'll talk about old times. It would be very nice. She all set it? Yes. Madame Paula, thank you for hiring Robbie. He's my protege. That was very kind of you. Kind nonsense. You've done more favors for me than I'll ever know. Including the Café Royale. The girls are terribly anxious. I don't think anyone's ever called them beauties before. <laughs> because they're not. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Gail. Won't you join us, Madame Pollard? Oh, thank you. There'll be a waltz or two, I presume. Many waltzes, if there aren't. We'll have a new orchestra tomorrow night. <laughs> Good afternoon, Howard. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Alex, oh. how did everything go? Well, my station is the last one, but I don't mind. Your people never want to leave you. Good. Thank you, Mr. Charles. <sighs> Robbie, you run along. I'll finish up. Well, this is my job, Alex. Go, on, go on. Find us a pretty girl. This is your first night here. You ought to meet some nice friends. We shouldn't have any trouble. Go on. Hey, waiter. Blow out the chandelier, Robbie. Mm. 
I'm sorry, but the dining room is closed. Did you lose something? Yes, my husband. Della! <laughs> Imagine, I didn't recognize you. It's a new dress. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. Mm. People look at me, they know I'm a waiter. They look at you, a guest. <laughs> Tonight you should be a guest. Voila! A guest, with a magician's compliments. Alex! It's magnificent! Oh, it's sparkly, it's blue, green. All the colors of the rainbow. Real diamonds. Alex. Alex, I never expected to wear a bracelet like this. How did you get... I read an advertisement in the newspaper. Lonesome bracelet hunts for lovely ladies. Alex, it must be worth a fortune. The star said, buy, I bought. No, tell me. My lips are sealed, madame. You see? Music. Extraordinary. Shall we dance? I want a home. I want to... I want to decorate a home. I want friends. I want them for longer than one season. Alex, I... I've got to stop moving, Alex. Alex, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Stella, what are you saying? Alex, I don't want you to carry trays for the rest of your life. We're not young anymore. Alex, you need a shop. You need success. I want you to be able to sit down when you're tired. Well, I, I found this bracelet right here on the floor. You found? It's not mine. I found it. I must return it. I can't have a home. You won't have a shop. No, no. That would be a crime, Della. No, it's all gone. No, it can't be. It can't. I must return it. We'd be caught. We have been caught. We have been caught. My bracelet has no sentimental value for me. <laughs> None of these things have. Oh, I suppose you could call it a, an occupational badge. Yes, of course, but Madame Falah, you have an insurance policy with my company. If the bracelet is not returned, we are bound to pay you $10,000. My company is sentimental about losing $10,000. Therefore, we prefer to see that the bracelet is returned. All right. But you must handle it discreetly. I can't afford to turn my hotel into a cops and robbers movie. I haven't notified the police for that reason. <laughs> if one guest learns that a bracelet's been stolen, my whole season's ruined, even if it's lost. No. Well, I've learned the people I cater to prefer hotels where the lost is found very quickly. We've searched your grounds. We've retraced your movements through the hotel. 
It doesn't take 24 hours to return a bracelet. No, Madame Pilar, the bracelet is not lost. It has been stolen. And unless you authorize us to register plain clothesmen in this hotel to check on guests and employees, we will have to ask you to sign a waiver to relieve us of all responsibility in the matter. And forget the 10,000? No, Mr. Wheelock, please register your men. Fine. But all your snooping and prying must be done quietly. So quietly, in fact, that even the lightest sleeper remains asleep. I insist on that, Mr. Wheelock. Very well, madame. Thank you. But, Madame Pilar, it has been our experience that thieves do not sleep. Good night. All right. Oxygen. Hydrogen. 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 Oxygen. Oxygen. Hydrogen. Oxygen. That's right. H2O. It works. It works. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Uh, what do I do about this side? Uh, four spoons. Um, let's see. Uh, ah, try um, one potato, two potato, three potato, four. Yeah. Uh, which well, spoon? Drop it if I got the big news. Oh, oh. Well, Nancy told me. Nancy had to switch for it? Yes, yeah, so straight. And she doesn't tell anyone else anything. What'd she tell you? What'd she, what'd she you gotta promise not to tell anybody else, because if it gets any farther... Oh, come, oh, come on. on. The bracelet belongs to Madame Pollard. Madame Pollard? Yeah, but that's not all. They got plain clothesmen in the hotel. Right in this hotel room, 306, 307. Detectives? Yeah, only they're not, they're not from the police. I, I don't get it. Well, somebody's in trouble, that's all. Ten thousand dollars worth. Is that what it was worth? She Gee. Ten thousand bucks on her arm. Aren't women crazy, though? Well, well, they don't, do they know who did it? No, no, Nancy didn't know. She says the police called nobody but room service. Well, what else? She's going to plug in later and find out for you. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good the evening. The bill could be ready on time. Florence, it doesn't matter. I suppose you want a cocktail. Yes, I do. Well, do drink it before the girls come. They're so impressionable. And, Henry, I don't want them to think that we consider cocktails smart. I never consider them smart. I occasionally consider them necessary. You, Mrs. Howard. Good evening, Good evening, Alexander. Good evening, Alexander. I'd like a Gibson before we order. Extra dry, two onions. A fourth. Hmm? Did you hear the latest? What? About the bracelet. What about the bracelet? Alex, are you getting Mr. Howard's Gibson? Yes. Make it a double. Yes, sir. What about the bracelet? It was Madame Pollard's. Madame Pollard's? They have got plain clothesmen all over this hotel looking for it. I don't believe it. Ten thousand dollars. Well, who told you that? Chemical engineering. Oh, then you'd have to believe it. A man that can't set a table can't be trusted. Well, he goes with a girl. She works on the switchboard. Well, that's a terrible, terrible thing. Yeah. They stole it last night. Hey, where were you? I found my tray on the table. I went in this morning to set up, and there it was. You said you were going to take care of it. Yes, I, I did leave it. Alex, what are you standing there for? They're waiting. Well, come on, let's go, let's go. You want me to get the drink? Well, uh, two onions, uh, very dry. No, no, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get it. What else did chemical engineering say? That's all. Here, Alex. Alex, up, up, up. Hey, Harvey, come here, come here. Did you hear anything else? Hey, what's up with Alex? He's sure fouling up. Why? What do you mean? You should see his tables. The Howards are so mad, they're getting ready to leave. Why? Well, no waiter. Hey, listen, you better get rid of that cigarette. I made it these really cracking that whip. Yeah, yeah. Do you like the material, Alex? Alex, look at it. Seems to me it's very good for Robert's room. <laughs> I never decorated a bachelor's apartment before. It's very nice, Stella. Is that all? It's just right. Yes, it is. Oh, you don't like it. Oh, yes, I do. It's just the right color for Robbie. Alex! Oh, Della, nothing, nothing's gone right for me today. Oh, I can't believe that. 
Alex, you've heard something you won't tell me. It's nothing you should know. <laughs> Alex, Alex, we found the bracelet. We didn't look for it. We went anywhere we shouldn't have been. Now come on back and play. Alex. Alex, look at it the way I do. Sometimes I believe no one dropped the bracelet. I wanted our future so much. It just appeared. Huh. Is that terrible? Please don't think so. And please, please don't frown anymore. You want to take a walk? No, my feet. So tired they went to sleep and kept the rest of me awake. Let's play one more game, hmm? Just one more. Come on. <laughs> oh, my darling commands. I obey. <laughs> Do I have to deal again? Mm -hmm. I hate. <laughs> when I deal, black threes, nothing. When you deal, my hand is magnificent. The aces just fly into it. Oh, I never knew you put a spell on your partner. It's nothing. The smallest of tricks. You will still be 18. You 80? Oh, then I would want to be 100. I'll never be 18. No. No. When you're in the room, I'm young. That is your most magical thing. When you leave the room, I just busy myself. Can you imagine being busy? Being really busy? Not looking for things to do. Oh, darling, I can hardly wait until the summer's over. Della. We found it! Why do we avoid it? I know we found it, Della. If we had found a pocketbook that no one claimed. A pocketbook with ten thousand dollars in it. Ten thousand? You have heard something. Is it worth ten thousand dollars? I don't know. I picked a figure. Why? I put ten thousand dollars in a pocketbook that doesn't exist. The material is very nice, Stella. What will Robbie say? I hope he likes it. I hope he does. Stella, hmm? surprise him. Go and fix his room while he's downstairs working. Make it nice. And maybe you, you know, you could invite some people in. Have a party. All right, who? Oh, some of the younger kids. Well, how, how about the maid to be? Mr. Charles and yes. his wife? Perhaps even Madame Poulard. No. That wouldn't be right? No! Why? Della. Della, I'm so tired. One minute you're my old Alex and the next you're... Is there a reason? I want to be told if there is. It's been the worst day of my life. I told you so, Della. Why was it? You know how I usually love my dining room? How I enjoy every trip, make little bets with myself. Is Mr. Howard going to have that drink or is he not? Every trip to a guest becomes a wonderful journey, a new experience. Today it wasn't true. I didn't care. That's good. I only thought of myself. And that's wrong when you want to serve someone. That's exactly what I've been telling you. It's wrong. After 20 years, no head is going to shout at me. He... Yes, he did. Oh, my silly darling. Oh, my sweet, sweet, lovely waiter. Oh, how upset you must have been. You know, it makes me so mad. You put on that uniform and anybody can shout at you. How can you stand it? No one, no one has ever shouted at me before. This has been the worst day of my life, Della. This hotel hates oh, me, darling, Della. stop thinking things like this. Yes, it hates me. We found that bracelet. Don't say that again. I know it. You know it. I know it. It hates me because it belongs to Madame Polar. Madame Polar? Oh, I've 
never seen her wearing it. Why didn't you tell me? And the ten thousand... Is that true? What, what, what the hell do they say? Robbie? It's Robbie Deller. Just a moment, please. My room, it's been searched. By whom? Those policemen, I told you they were here. I don't know why they'd pick me. Alex, why didn't you tell me? Are they searching every room? I don't know. Did you see them? No, I, after work, I went to one of the guys' room. He said uh, it had been searched. I didn't believe him. Then I went to mine. Oh, it's your imagination, Robbie. It's... I don't know why they would think of me. I don't like not it's being It's your trusted. imagination, Robert. No, I'm sorry. It is. It, excuse me. You see, this, this bureau, yeah. well, mine's over here. No, I don't dust as much as you do. So you can see right right where they moved it. What? Some of the college kids must have played a joke on you, Robbie. Forget about it, will I you? Can't. No, I can't. I know this happened. You see, I, they don't know me now. I'm, I'm new here. And they're going to start asking me a lot of questions pretty soon. Shh. I don't want that. They, they went through my laundry. They went, they went through my closet. The door was open when I came back. I just cleaned my room, and I, I know I closed it. My bed? I know how to make my own bed. They tore it up. My pillow's on, always like this. And it, you know, this is the way it... We found it, Robbie. Tell him, Della. I did find it. I don't want it. Nice people. Always hang around nice people. Robert, understand. Don't you see what happened? You took it. I understand that. It doesn't make any difference to me whether you found it or whether you had to sneak into somebody's room for it. I wouldn't do that, Robbie. You know I wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. I know. You see, I wouldn't. You make me a waiter. The new project, huh? You're going to teach me to be a waiter like you? I meant it. I meant it, Robbie. What do you think he's going to get out of it? Don't, Robbie, don't. You're so young, you don't understand. Don't judge him, please. Robbie, son. Oh, don't you ever call me that. Boy. He looks terribly sinister. Yield, yeah, Florence. Henry, if there has been a theft, I think we should just go to Bar Harbor and forget it. Florence, it's all gossip. We can't have the girl spend this important summer in a nest of crime and violence. What makes this summer so important, Florence? The one before their sophomore year always is. <laughs> well, here it comes. That's right. Bury yourself in that. We never talk anymore. Is the roast beef rare, Alexander? Alex. Uh, yes, sir, we have roast beef. Alex. Excuse me, Mr. Howard. Alex. Good evening. Madam Pollard wants to see you in her suite immediately. Madam Pollard? Yes. Sir. What about why? I don't know. But I'm serving Mr. and Mrs. Howard. I'll put somebody else on your table. You better go. Go on, go. What's the matter with you? Go on.
I'm afraid of asking Alex up here was a mistake. I have a purpose, Madame Pilar. And your investigation is certainly not as discreet as I'd hoped. Every employee knows the exact number of carrots in every stone. Any day now, a guest's gonna check out. Then another. Soon they'll all go. I don't want people watched. I want my bracelet back and the whole affair forgotten. And it's not going to be if you waste your time watching this poor boy, Robert. Madame Pallard. And bringing my waiters in one by one to be questioned. Madame Pallard, no one in this hotel knows a thing about that boy except your waiter, Alexander Ingalls. There are no references on the boy in your file. We can trace him to only one previous address, a cheap boarding house in Miami. His room here, there is nothing in it, literally nothing. When a man lives with no trace of a past about him, there is usually a reason. Come in. Come in, Alex. Alex, this is Mr. Wheelock. Sir? How do you do? Madame Pula, I'm in the midst of serving you. I the... know. I took you away from your station. I'm sorry. Alex, please sit down. No, thank you. Stand. Then I'll be very direct with you. I need information. Madame can rest assured that I'll answer truthfully. It's about your protege, Robert. Robbie? What about him? Well, it seems that he has so very few belongings. Mr. Wheelock can't find a list of his former employers. May I ask why? Why do you want to know about him? It's about my bracelet. Evidently, I lost it on opening night. You remember the night I came by your table and we talked? Surely he can't be excused. There's no reason to be. Why do you say that, Mr. Ingalls? Well, I know him. Mr. Wheelock feels that he doesn't. Alex, perhaps you could help him if you'd... You just tell him a little bit more about Robert. A little more about? Robert. How you met him, where you met him. Della and I met him uh, two years ago at, at the Sans Souci. He was working there as a lifeguard. He wasn't working regularly. Della and I thought that he deserved more than he had. Uh, he's a nice fellow. He attached himself to us. See, Della doesn't drive, so he chauffeured her around. Go on, Mr. Ingalls. And I got him a job at the hotel where I worked as a busboy. He worked out great. He has a talent to be a waiter. Della and I felt uh, so proud of him as though he were our own son. I'm sure you did. That's why I'm surprised that anybody would accuse him. Well, Mr. Wheelock? Is that all, madame? I think so, Alex. Thank you. Mr. Ingalls. You say you got Robert a job in a hotel in Florida? Yes. And I understand you are also responsible for getting him his job here? Yes. You work very closely with the boy, don't you? Well, he's my busboy. A waiter and the busboy, the, they work hand in hand. They're I understand team. that. And he was working on your table opening night? Yes. You were with him all through the dinner hour? Of course, he's my busboy. Yes. And after that, you cleaned your tables together. How long does that generally take? Oh, about an hour until about ten. So that you were with him until ten o'clock? Yes. No, I let him go earlier that night. You let him go early. You finished your tables alone. Yes. Where did Robbie go? I don't know exactly. Then you couldn't account for his whereabouts after, say, uh, 9.45. No, I couldn't. But surely he couldn't have been anywhere where your bracelet was found. Couldn't long... he? You say Robert left the dining room between 9.30 and 10. At 9.30, Madame Pilar was wearing her bracelet in the dining room. At 10.30, it was missing. Robert was the last one to leave the dining room, except for yourself. So assuming that the bracelet was lost in the dining room, you would be the only one who could say that it did not leave the dining room in Robert Warren's pocket. Mr. Wheelock, if Alex says the bracelet was not found in the dining room, that's sufficient for me. I trust his ability to judge character as I trust my own. You're sure, aren't you, Alex? That Robert couldn't have found the bracelet? I'm quite sure, madam. Thank you, Mr. Ingalls. I think that will be all for now. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. A very loyal man. Rather nervous, wasn't he? Now, look, I just took Robert off the table this morning. I can't take you off this afternoon. What is wrong with Alex? I don't know. He just isn't himself anymore. Well, you'll just have to stay and work with him. It's all right. He's my best man. Excuse me, Mr. Charles. May I see you for a minute? 
Well, certainly, Mr. Wheelock. I'll talk to you later. I'd like to check a few details about uh, this Ingalls. He says he let his busboy leave the dining room at 9.30 on opening night. Do you recall that? Well, let me think back. The last guests were at Alex's table. Now, they left with Madame Pollard, and Alex was left alone at the dining room, yes. Oh, Ingalls was left alone in the dining room on opening night? Mm-hmm. I remember speaking to him after they left. He, he was cleaning his table, and I wondered where his busboy was. Did he seem at all nervous? No, he seemed his usual self, but something's happened. I've had a lot of trouble with him since then. I don't know why. First, the busboy was changed. Then... His busboy. He's been having trouble with his busboy. Well, I guess so, because the boy himself requested the change. He came to ask me about it this morning. Thank you, Mr. Charles. Where is uh, Ingalls now? Well, he's probably out on the terrace serving cocktails. I see. Thank you very much. Mrs. Ingalls? Yes? My name is Robert Wheelock. Is uh, Mr. Ingalls in? Uh, no, I suppose he's still downstairs in the uh, dining room. Why do you want to see him? It's about a bracelet. Do you mind if I wait for him for a few minutes? No, not at all. Please, come in. Very pleasant room. It's our home. Uh, would you care for a cup of tea? No, thank you. Oh, yes, perhaps I would. Oh. Allow me. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, man. Sewing, it gets so untidy. Sit down, please. Tell me, are you a detective? In a way. <laughs> That's a funny answer. <laughs> you either are or you aren't. <laughs> My husband is usually very prompt. You see, I've always a cup of tea ready for him. <laughs> well, thank you. It's the one hour of the day where we can just sit and look at one another across the table. As you and your wife probably do at dinner time. Must be a very strange life, following your husband from one hotel to another. I don't follow my husband. We go together. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> How long have you been coming here with him? Oh, 15 years. I see. What do you do with yourself all day in such a pleasant keep myself busy. Doing what? Oh, sewing, making things. It's a strange question. I'm interested, Mrs. Ingalls. What are you making now? Uh, uh, draperies. Why did your husband have a fight with his busboy, Robert Warren? <laughs> Still the third degree, Mr. Wheelock. Well, is it? Would you care to search my room? I understand you are searching rooms. Please do. The bureau. Here. Do you put things back neatly? And what about the bed? Shall I tear it apart for you? Here. Isn't it a shame we have so many things to go through? I just sent the laundry out today. There's no laundry bag. Is that a good place to hide things in? You're welcome to search anything you want. You're not criminals. No one would suggest that you are, Mrs. Ingalls. I'd like to stop back a little later when your husband is here. May I? If you want me to, I can ask him to find you. Oh, please don't bother. Thank you very much. I'll find him myself. I'll be back later. Madame Pilar sent for me. Excuse me. Don't tell me your trouble. Madame Pilar sent for me. Listen, it's about you. Me? About you. Why me? They asked me about you, and I made it quite clear that you couldn't be mixed up with this. And they believed me. And I can go, huh? Go. Florida. I'm going back to Florida.
What's the matter then? There was a detective up in our room. Did he search our room? No, no. What did he do? He just came and he said he wanted to talk to you. Was it v -Lock? Yes. I already talked to him. Did you? Maybe he wasn't satisfied. Did he say anything? No, he just came and he said he wanted to talk to you. I don't understand. Alex, he thinks we have it. But well, he can't think that. How do you know? What made you think so? I know, I know. What did he say? Nothing, but he... He was so sure of himself. Alex, we've... We've got to get rid of this bracelet before he finds it. <laughs> you can't carry it around in here, Della. You please calm yourself. If they see you like this, they know. But they know. They do know. Della, whatever happens, please. Remember, I'll take care of you. Darling. Darling, don't you understand what I'm trying to tell you? It's you I'm worried about, not me. And we have to hide this place so no one can ever find it again. Alex, Alex, we, we will know where it is. Don't you see? Don't you see what I've done to you? You know, you would have done, taken this bracelet back immediately. I, I wouldn't let you. I appealed to you in every way I knew how. I wanted a home. I wanted a place. Darling, I was willing to give up your life, and for what? For things. How could I have done it to you? <laughs> Alex. Alex. Alex, we found that bracelet. Now, can't we lose it again? Right here. Wouldn't it be enough? For us? Maybe. But would it be enough for Robbie? Then I'm taking the bracelet back. I'm giving it into Madame Polar's hand. What about Mr. Wheelock? What will they do? That's up to Madame Polar to decide. Della, do you know what we've done to that boy? You said that day was to be cataclysmic for me. I'm taking the bracelet back, Rob. I'm putting it right in her hand. You see why I took it, Rob? I don't know why I took it. I took it, why, but you know why? I wanted to make some happiness for Della. For me. I try to be so good. But I'm not a magician. Della. Our family is back together again. just a moment, the names in tonight's cast, and we'll introduce next week's star.
episodes by Milgrims. Now here is a preview of next week's Goodyear Television Playhouse. I'm Stephen McNally. Next year at this time, next week I should say at this time, I'm going to appear on a play called uh, Big Man on the Campus. With me in the show will be Richard Jekyll and lovely Constance Ford. Please try to be with us next week when we present Big Man on the Campus for the Goodyear Television Playhouse. Thank you, Stephen McNally. Big Man on Campus is the story of a former All-American football player and his struggle to make his brother follow in his footsteps. Two weeks from tonight, the Philco Television Playhouse will present Middle of the Night, a new television play by award-winning dramatist Patty Chayefsky, starring Eva Marie Saint in her first television appearance since On the Waterfront. Be sure to see Big Man on Campus next week on the Goodyear Television Playhouse. Don't forget, next Saturday night over another network, Philco will present the Miss America pageant from Atlantic City. See your local paper for time and channel. The Philco Television Playhouse originates live from Radio City, New York. This is Jay Jackson speaking for Philco.